Welcome back to Polter Park for uh, what is surely going to be another very tense, exciting afternoon here of FA Vaz football between AFC St Austell and Ascot United. Last week, uh, St Austell slipped down uh, to a defeat at Godolphin. Um, not uh, altogether the better performance of the season, but uh, it was a case of uh, we've got Liam Eddy back this week. He's back fit after a slight injury with tendonitis problem. Neil Slafer was out, uh, he's back uh, after a one game suspension. And uh, Ollie Brokenshaw is also fit today after uh, leaving the park early last week with a hamstring uh, scare. Ascot United are the opponents. Well, they travel here from the Hellenic League Premier Division, fourth uh, currently in the table, and uh, they're on a run of five unbeaten games. So they'll be here meaning business. It's going to be an exciting afternoon. It's Purim Films, and join us after the break. My name's Shane Solomon and I'm hosting a corporate evening here at Kingsley Village and I've chosen Mark Huckle from Pyram Films to film our event because he's professional, he knows what he's doing and he always delivers on time for either online video or TV productions. So oh, it's uh, FA Vaz football once again at uh, Polter and Glyn Hooper alongside me summarising. Uh, Glyn, uh, another good turnout, but uh, weather not quite so good today. No, uh, weather's not as good, but probably a bigger turnout. I've got to say, it's probably looking at around 2,000 here today. Um, but a huge, huge game for, for Cornish football, huge game for St Austell. One of the things I said to Phil uh, yesterday was if uh, St Austell are successful in getting through today, for me, um, it matches what, what Truro City did back in uh, 2007. That side was put together uh, to win the Vars. This side, uh, St Austell, has been put together to try and win the league. Uh, and the vastness in, uh, in the monetary stakes of putting those two sides together uh, would be a, a real huge, huge effort from everyone here at St Austell. Early free kick here to St Austell. Yes, that's Neil Slateford who uh, has filed for that free kick. Of course, Neil suspended last week in their uh, St Austell's defeat at Cadolphin. The line up very quickly, Chapman in goal, back for Lean, Giles, uh, Wetter, and sorry, uh, Watts. I'll start again on there. Chapman in goal. And then it's about four and Lean, Giles, Wetter, and Watts. And we're bringing the rest of the line up after this free kick, which Martin Watts is going to be swinging in. He knows lethal on a, on a dead ball situation. Towards that far post, keeper Chris Grace is up and punches it clear, but Jared Sims. Picks it up for the Lily Whites. Slateford comes inside, looks to perhaps have a shot. He does, it's blocked. Yeah, skipper Chris Resky to lean. Two players on the far post still, but it goes near to Eddie. Wetcher's there now, Liam Eddy. Back to Resky. Resky with a shot, comes off. Defender is still small, still applying the pressure. Jarb Sins looks and turns. Broken shot with a cross and uh, Ascot managing to keep it away at the moment Wetter with a header that's over but a good bit of pressure there Glynn great early start um, the surface is going to suit St Austell a um, little bit of rain is going to allow the ball just to slide off take a, it's a bit bobbly out there so that just takes it away um, Ascot apparently are very much from back to front but a super start from St Austell now tell a novice like me what to do back to front um, Ascot are going to they're not going to play an awful lot of football. They're going to hit their front men as early as possible, squeeze the game then from behind, um, and look to play off the second ball. I hope you all understand that. Pure film viewers, there's a goal kick from Grace, which Watts will try and keep in play. Peninsula, but uh, that defeat last week could have been good. We'll wait and see as rescue comes clear. He's, uh, his run is obstructed, a referee trying to play advantage but calls it back. Yeah, worry in early doors that pretty simple decision um, which should have gone to St Austin when Ascot's way with a with a throw in. Um, but I can't say I've seen anything from Ascot at the moment that particularly worries me. I know we're very early in the game but 
Um, anyone walking in as a neutral would certainly say that St. Austell looked the better side so far. Chapman's free kick. Headed away by Hancock, who uh, perhaps had his heel clipped by Sims. Giles, uh, yes, what Giles said, man of the match in the last fast game, having to clear it away. Lee Boone on the ball for Ascot. Good cross in. The number nine, uh, John Bennett, turns and his shot is blocked. Broke the shot and bring it away. Finds Liam Eddy. Eddie, of course, didn't play last Saturday. Checked in play by Rob Saunders, trying to feed Boone, but uh, Giles prepared to put it out of play for a throw to Ascot. Skipped to Dave Hancock with the throw. Short one to Saunders, back to Hancock. Goes past Boone and again Giles out for a throw. Giles not prepared to look about with it. No, um, first time Ascot has been really into some of half, a little bit of pressure here uh, with the throw-ins and um, some clearances from, from Jyla. That's uh, giving the ball back to Ascot each time, but nothing uh, too special at the moment, certainly on show from uh, from Ascot. Metro clears, broken shot, picks up the loose ball, back to rescue, clears his lines. Alex Rodriguez, the uh, Ascot number four, the offside. And also uh, have the benefit of a free kick. Give you that lineup again. We've got the back four, as we said. Uh, Lean on the right, Watt on the left, Johnson, Wetter in the middle. Then we've got Julie Dingle in front of the back four. The midfield in front of him with uh, Slateford, Bertie Shaw, and Reski. Eddie right up front with Sims just lying in between that gap, and uh, that's into the houses. Yeah, he's got a corner kick. Um, couldn't really see that from here, but uh, one of the one of the tactics that Austell use is they hit uh, Dan Lean for most goal kicks. He pushes forward into a, a wide right area, and if you see the game develop, every time they look to, to look to go that direction, uh, Dan win most things, and they are very quick to pick up on the second ball. But another opportunity here um, again with Watsy's uh, quality delivery uh, and St. Austell being very strong at the set piece. Uh, good opportunity. So Watts with an in stringer. He's at five post. Uh, Eddie out for the moment by Ascot. Sims on the ball. Good cross. Falls to Dan Lee. That's his five post. Wetter's there to play, but he decides to Eddie back to Giles. And it's there! Martin Giles, seven minutes on the clock. It caught a defender as it went in, but uh, Giles will claim that one. Yeah, definitely. Corner comes in. They clear it, but they don't clear it well enough. Um, they recycle the ball to also down to this left-hand side to Dan Lean, who hits a great little ball back into the box. And Ed's uh, something that he's probably not known for, just nods the ball down delicately to, to uh, Martin Giles, who you would have thought it would be the other way around, and he strikes it superbly with his right foot. Takes a slight deflection, which leaves the keeper absolutely stranded. What a great start for St. Austell. Yes, great start, and uh, apparently that's what Ascot got in their last run against Norwich. A great start, three shots on goal, three goals, and uh, today they've got to come from behind. So St. Austell with that goal for Mike Giles, seventh minute. Don't forget, we 90, well, less than 90 minutes now away from a semi final place, two legs, and when it gets to the semi finals with that uh, two legged affair, it's. Uh, even Stevens for everyone then, as St. Austin with a throw, lean to Brickenshaw. Giles with a strong header, finds Slateford. Perhaps a slight miscontrol from uh, number 11, and Ascot get the throw. Good 
tussle there on one of number six, Jesse Wilson, and uh, that's got on the break. Two forwards get past the Sinos to back four. In towards number 10, it goes past Chapman, and Damian Markman pulls a quick equaliser back. Yeah, just lost possession in the middle of the park. Um, Sinostal got caught high up the field, um, and the left midfielder just went in behind Dan Lean, and they just couldn't recover quick enough. The, the distance between the keeper and uh, the back four was too far, uh, and in the end, it was a nice finish. Uh, nice and controlled, uh, little left foot uh, slot into the back of the net, which that's disappointing because I haven't really seen an awful lot from this Ascot side so far that would would say that they've got any major quality within the side, but they did show a little bit of quality there. So, eight minutes on the clock, and uh, it's all square here at Colter. Supposed to start again. Dingle with the ball. So we used to uh, going in front and then conceding and going in front and conceding as we saw up at Greenwich. Uh, one of the great games so far in this Vans run for St. Austin. Wetra clears. Eddie will win it. A good win as well to Sims. Back to Liam Eddie. But, uh, Dave Hancock is there to sweep up. Good play by the number two. And we've got Bennett. Bennett's caught by Wetter. Markman would try and play on, but the referee Brett Hutchinson calls it back. Yeah, right decision. Um, the two, the captain for uh, Ascot did ever so well there. Uh, covered around, uh, which is something that we noticed in the last game um, that they didn't do very well. Um, Stanway right back, who I commented on a fair bit, but the, the fullback there covered around and then actually got them out of uh, their back four by playing as well. And in the end, a bit of a rash challenge. Has, uh, resulted in a free kick and I believe a yellow card as well. Yes, early yellow card there for me. What a 10 minutes uh, nearly completed. So kick comes in. Chapman is running backwards and just uh, got it away. Yeah, he was in trouble for a while, his feet, he didn't move his feet quick enough and, um, you know, really, as a keeper, you know, something that comes in underneath the crossbar you need to be dealing with, but with the slope it's caught him out slightly. Um, so it's another corner here to Ascot now and a, a little bit more pressure upon some also. Rob Saunders to take. Corner comes in towards that far post. Good header out by Dan Lean. Martin Watts to Sims. Hancock uh, with the throw for Ascot. Boone can't control it. Watts, uh, Watts clears his line. Eddie against the number five, Dan Bailey. The arm was out by the number five, Lee Eddie, uh, Liam Eddie's got the free kick and, and uh, Bailey's got the yellow card. Yeah, right decision, Ed's just gone down his left channel um, and the five's just pulled his arm right across um, Liam's face. Yeah, Liam's again been very clever. Um, did, he, did he need to go to ground? No. Did he go to ground? Yes. Did he get the free kick? Yes. Did he get a yellow card against the five? Yes. Have they got a super position to attack? Yes. So, again, we've talked about gameplay and, and making sure that you understand the game and you've got to but sometimes just uh, play to all the laws of the game and he certainly made sure he did there. So that's two central defenders. Uh, one from each side with the yellow card early on. Rescued to take this free kick. Two-man wall, but uh, he was swinging in towards uh, the edge of the six-yard box, no doubt. Um, just looking at the way Ascot set up there, two man wall, but they had nobody what we call in the soft spot. We call the soft spot the area that, that no one um, really attacks early doors. We put a defender in there um, to try and stop the ball reaching a dangerous area. Hopefully, Phil's picked up on that. Um, there was no one there to protect that, and I just felt uh, a shorter free kick into that area could have caused them problems. As it was, they went long and in the end uh, too long. They overhit the, over the free kick for, for an hour dog.
Charles uh, off for a throw in to Ascot. Thank <laughs> In towards the edge of the penalty area, now it's Boone. Boone's cross, cut out by Giles. Close to Broken China. Little pass which uh, Dingle can get onto. Oh, well, slight through, but uh, the Ascot coaching staff there are a bit bewildered with that uh, free kick being given, but it's lost to take it. Sims gets, wins the throw in that far corner. And in with the throw. Good long throw. Two yellow shirts against Spoke to Shire, but Dingle picks up the clearance and lean again. Pulls up near post, not away by Rodriguez. And helped out by uh, Rob Saunders, but still Sinolsky in possession. Dingle in control there. Tussle with Saunders, but Sinolsky get it back again. Rasky outside. To, uh, Neil Slateford. Slateford does well, wins the corner. Yeah, they've got away with one there. Jordy Dingle just miscontrolled it, and um, it should have been a free kick. He had hold of the, the eight shorts. Um, and I think if uh, anything comes of this, that's not going to be pretty disappointed. But. Um, Early, early door shows that, I think the 10 and 11 for Ascot show a lot of pace. Um, they're the two danger men for me at the moment. The eight helps things on, uh, but here we go, a watch with the cor corner into the box. Opportunity for good, good defending from the, the, the big number five, and it's a chance for Ascot to break. The break is through John Bennett, but uh, he's just held up by Giles. Suggestions there, no doubt, that they would want a yellow card shown to Giles, but... Uh, doesn't look at this moment as if uh, Mr. Hutchinson's having any of that. But play resumes. Hancock on the ball for Ascot. Watts cuts it out and uses Resky. In the middle of the park to Broken Shaw. A little bit of space to move into. He was waiting perhaps for Slater to go out for the forward on the right, but uh, brings Lean into the game. Eddie tries to dummy it, but uh, Ascot only clear it to Slateford. Opportunity for another throw from Darlene. So that the drummer has been having a bit of practice since the last fast game, but uh, that throw from Lean straight off by Neil Slateford for a goal kick. Yeah, Neil Slateford hasn't started as bright as he uh, normally would perhaps like to. Um, got a good free kick given away earlier by Martin Giles. Uh, they broke from the corner. Ascot interested, all surrounded the referee, uh, wanted a yellow card for it, and it, and it probably was a yellow card. And he's deliberately pulled him back. Uh, we talk about giving away good free kicks, that was a good free kick to give away, and he got away with it without uh, picking up another card. So Chris Grace with the goal kick. Coming up to 18 minutes completed. Sinistral one, Ascot one. Markman equalised for the visitors. Watts with a long free kick. Ooh, headed straight to Jared Sims, back to Birkenshire. Shot comes in but over, but um, I wouldn't say too classy defending. Now again, long ball into to Dan Link to try and win the first one. Um, even though he didn't win it, uh, the defender's obviously aware of his strength. Drops down into uh, Jared Sims, who just lays it off to Charlie Birkenshire. On well, this time, couldn't quite get out of his feet early enough um, and put the ball over the top. There's nothing here that, to uh, to scare some hostel. Um, I actually, I'd say, I was more impressed with with Stanway in the first 20 minutes than I have been with Ascot. You know, it appears that uh, Chris Grace is just using a few inches of the pitch outside of the six-yard box. As uh, he's told to bring the ball back in, and then I think it just rolls off. Uh, off the divot that he's caused and was pasted on to get some some of his foot under the wall as he takes his goal kick. It's a good kick though. Giles wins it. <laughs> Rescue, first time ball towards Eddie but blocked out by the uh, number five Bailey. This control there in the middle of the park by the Lily White says it's Markman on the ball. Danger goes past Wetter, beats Chapman, but great save by Jason Chapman. Fantastic save. 
Oli Briggs was just trying to take the ball with his wrong foot in the middle of the park and he's lost possession and it was a pretty simple ball to take and Dan Lean had just anticipated Oli taking it and move forward. In that moment, he's lost it and the ball's got in between Dan Lean and, and, and Wet and, and the lads who, who does look a half decent player just glided past Lee Wetter and, and Jason Chapman was needed there with a one-on-one -on -one save um, and then with uh, Martin Giles just covering in behind uh, so it didn't go for a corner and, and now it's a, a slightly safer situation than what it could have been but uh, uh, Oli Brokenshire has got to use the correct technique. the last two balls that have come into him in the middle of the park he's lost um, he's got to make the right decisions there because you'll get punished as they did earlier for the goal um, something I would be saying now from the sideline to Ollie is he's, he's got to look at those decisions um, because they're two poor ones um, and, and luckily so far they've not been costly so time for Phil to do his little bit of work now and, and get that information on to, to his players so when you look back on the match afterwards uh, we had a after just two minutes against Stanway, that missed by their number 10, and uh, we could be saying that after this game, that's saved by Chapman there. Yeah, you know, the goalkeeper's a, a vital part of any side, and we know how good Jason Chapman is on one on one situations, shot stopper, um, experience, and, and he's just kept um, Sunostal, you know, on level terms there. Uh, what you don't want to be doing is, is going behind, allowing Ascot then just to to slow the game up, slow the tempo up, away from home. They'll be quite happy to take a draw today. So we've also got to stay on the front foot. <laughs> from that instant, um, goal scorer David Martin not looking too clever as the ball just rolls across the uh, rolls across the Sebastian goal marker. Yeah, a bit of a decision from Dan Lean and, and Lee Wettis there. The ball just got between them, both looked at each other. Um, Ascot didn't look, they just got onto the ball and um, he hasn't hit it cleanly and I think it's pretty safe for, for all the way across the goal but um, yeah there's uh, Ascot has slightly grown into this game. As the wind sweeps from left to right uh, into the face of Chapman, volleys are up, Rome is expected and uh, for once the runner forecast is correct unfortunately is Dingle on the ball to Jim's good touch to Slate through. Gresky at the far post, Eddie towards the near post. Well, up came uh, off a Ascot defender, another corner. A little bit of quality there from Jared Sims. Um, probably the best seven aside, eight aside, nine aside player I've seen on a 3G surface. His quality is unbelievable. Just come into him, just rolled it round the corner into Slates. Um, Slates has managed to get a corner from the top side again. So another opportunity here for Slates. Midway through the first half, Watts with the corner. In towards that near post. Oh, that is full of the Sims on the edge of the box. Couldn't quite get a good shot on it, but uh, Sinostra still possesses Slateford. His shot is blocked. Rolls out towards Eddie, and then it's cleared by the number three, Andy Dean. But uh, that was dangerous, and Yeah, real chaos in a, a near post corner. Flicks in. The keeper was nowhere to be seen, and uh, I think it's more or less cleared off the line. But still pressure here for Sinostra on the Ascot goal. Wetter couldn't get the uh, better of Lee Boone. Watts with a throw, Dooley Dingle. Spreads the play out to Dan Lean. Rescue steps over it, unfortunately, well, a white shirt behind him is uh, some lost back in possession though. Liam Eddy shot down by Alex Rodriguez. Oh, good ball into it, Rescue, but just runs away from it, off for the goal kick. Sinostal, crowd in good voice behind him there. Kick done by Martin, but uh, goes to Wetter and to Dan Lean. And the Dean's on for four, will find, will almost find uh, Damien Martin, but had a play. Chapman's kick, halfway line, touched by Sims in towards Birkenshire, but Markman on the ball for Ascot, first time cross towards Bennett, but Chapman picks that up with no problem. Kick goes straight to uh, 
Ascot now. Hancock, ball, long ball forward, cut out by Giles. Watts gets there, using Wesley. Doesn't muck about with it, it is the defence. Broken tries beat there in the middle of the pot by the uh, in the Sam Lee boom, but they lose possession as Sinusta move forward over the halfway line. Slateford still in possession. Eventually shut down by the team. And then Slateford just takes his shirt back. Yeah, McLean looks a good player. Um, he's a good outlet for them. A um, bit of concern for me is when, when they do hit that ball, and also into Dan Lean. They leave the, the left channel free. Lee Wettis needs to slide across to the right, as does Jyla uh, and then and Martin Watts. A couple of times now when Dan Lean stepped into that area, it's left a big channel free, which Ascot have exploited. So they've got to look at just sliding slightly to cover that um, before it actually happens. Right in the middle of the park, Dingle have actually been rescued. The little ball to Sims. Sees Eddie running with pace, but the keeper... Chris Grace is out and clears it quickly. Dingle not able to get the ball away from. Now that's interesting. Giles has made that tackle on the knee boom. For a moment, the fear is always there when the defender's got a yellow card that there could be a, a problem. But uh, in fact, it was Lee Wetter, wasn't it? Who's, uh, got the yellow for Sinops at the moment. So we're OK on that one as Sinops now. Lee, Liam Eddy, chance to run at the goal. I've seen too much of him so far. Straight for David. Make sure that uh, Dean had to make the play and through which uh, Dan Lee will take. Put it by Rescue for Sinorski. Cross in, finds Eddie. Eddie turns and shoots, but uh, why not causing Chris Grace too many problems? A uh, very acute angle, but um, again, Sinorski just from a throw in have gone long again. I'd just like to see them vary it up slightly. Um, that's got two, two big centre halves. Seem quite comfortable with that being thrown into them. Uh, with two big centre halves, you've got to manoeuvre them, you've got to pull them around the pitch. And uh, just to, to vary that would be uh, nice to see. There's a uh, goal kick. Good distance again. Charles is up there. Lean clears. Nicely falls to Jared Sims. Then gets it to Broken Shower. Almost got Eddie away. But uh, he's not back to Grace. Grace takes one touch and then clears. And the pressure from Slateford. Uh, looks as if uh, Slate for the rescue of swap wings. So now she's just trying something a bit different. He's wants to take the throw. Sims wants it. Goes over him to Liam Eddy. Handball perhaps, but to play on. Gregory Sod chips it over the uh, back four and Snorsel with a throw. Uh, we've got Damian Martin on the ball inside. That ball from Saunders over hit, or whether it was Jesse Wilson over hit. Pick the key, half an hour in, um, quarter final of the FA Vars. This isn't the side that's scaring you. Um, when you reach this part of the cup, you think you're going to come up against some, a really quality side. This isn't a quality side, Ascot. Ascot are not, and I'll go on record now, are not going to win the FA Vars. So, for me, as the draw goes, Sonoso aren't ever going to get a better chance to get to a semi-final in FA Vars as they are going to today. Great shot. Wins the ball, not in a funny uh, white shirt, Charles. Up well in the air for Sinorski. Dingle told he's got time, but um, he was quickly challenged there by Boone. Good play by Boone, then uses Saunders. Saunders can't quite get it to Markman. Saunders stops Sinorski in possession. 
Watson the throw. And Bailey clears. Oh, clears by Watts, but through to Grace. Of course, Queen Hooper's um, part of the City FA Vars. Victorious uh, side. Um, the equivalent in that run in the quarter final was Whitehawk, which we'll come back to in a minute. It's supposed to have got a clear, but. Now, Scott just um, getting a bit of possession. Right, boom. To Mortman. Inside the Saunders. Spread and play to Dean. Bennett. He goes back to the goal, he turns, he gets past two defenders. Giles is going to make a challenge, he does, he does well, and then scoops it away for a, a corner, but uh, Bennett with a bit of skill there. Well, it's the first bit he's done, I've looked at him, you know, as a, an old number nine myself, and I've been disappointed with him. And um, he's going to do you for pace, so you don't actually get, need to get too tight to him. Um, but they did get too tight, he managed to roll, he's going to look to pin defenders. And he's rolled and then we've dived in with the second uh, challenge. Uh, and in the end, there's a bit of a covering challenge that's coming, but dangerous play here, Ascot corner. Saunders with that corner, came off the Sinistro head and over for another one. Yeah, Geordie Dingle covering that that near post area, just running, uh, won the ball, but uh, I'm not quite sure he knew where it was going, and it just drifted over the crossbar. And again, you don't want to be giving anything away just before half-time. Rob Saunders with the corner, again near post, and again Dingle with a header. Take three. Yeah, I think they've probably done their homework. Um, if, if there's an area of James Chapman's game that you'd, you know, perhaps want to improve upon its uh, crosses, and they're really blocking out that near post area, and they're dropping it into the same area each and every time. Um, so also really must be on their toes here. Another well, corner, Ooh. it's Dingle again. Three on the trot. They've done the homework here. Um, the ten has gone and stood straight in front of, of Chapman, uh, probably one of their better players in the air. The nine is on the near post area. They're looking for a little flick where five and six are at the back post. Let's try again. A little bit deeper this time. Saunders just juggles with it under the crossbar. Wow. Well done, that's all I can really <laughs> say there because uh, he didn't look comfortable at all with it. Um, second half he should cope better with it so we do not want to give any corners away from that top side because uh, it's certainly a plan of theirs that they're going to hit the same areas. Marina Hooper almost almost speechless there as uh, Chapman just pushed that one up in the air and then caught it second time as Dan leaning in possession at the moment back door forward going all the way through the grace. Long kick from the keeper over Giles. Listen to the shout. Chapman's <laughs> kick. Two Ascot players go for it. Giles wins that one against uh, any challenges. Ascot, 3 0 winners in the last round at home to Norwich. That was a Certainly a good win on paper, which surprised a few of us. It's an Austin 2 0 home against Stanway. Coming into those that gruesome 10 minutes before the half time break when uh, neither side want to make a mistake. Rodriguez tries to clear. Break the side into the ball, but. Uh, that is there to clear. Dean to Bennett. Then outside to uh, McLean. Dean tries his hardest to keep it in, but out for, th uh, out for a goal kick and uh, just a second of uh, St. Austin to collect themselves again. Yeah, the game's gone a bit scrappy in the last five or six minutes. Uh, no one's really got a foothold on the game. Um, one of the things they haven't been able to do, Sonosa, was get Liam Eddy down the channels. 
uh, and get at the centre half. So they need to try and get him more on the ball in areas they can run at the two centre halves, particularly the five who's on a yellow card. A little bit of pressure here now, first and also going for Good ball, he walks, finds Vesky, comes inside and using Slateford. Slateford crosses it, came off the foot of uh, Dave Hancock, but the Ascot skipper not knowing too much about that cross. Uh, good bit of play by, by Martin Watts, good through ball. Um, gets uh, Slates in, inside that right channel, um, drills the cross in and um, the fullback uh, has a, a bit of a swipe at it and he's lucky that it's come off his shin and then ended up behind the goal for a corner. Uh, they did it towards the back post, Martin Giles has gone towards the near post. You need to, just need to recycle this ball now back into the box. Lee Wetters is there, the keeper's come a long way, dealt with it though. Is Fido, uh, just outside the Ascot box, Rescue though, beat by Bennett, now a break on, goal scorer Damian Markman, just pushes it too far ahead of him but Saunders picks up the loose ball using the claim, comes inside of uh, Dingle and a free kick on the edge of the box there, this could be dangerous. Yeah, the 11 and the 10 are the two players for me, um, and again the 11's got on it, uh, he's fronted Jordy Dingle up, um, gone past him on the outside, Jordy's brought him down right on the edge of the box, right on the corner of um, the 18 yard box. Uh, we're looking at a little right foot here, the 18 is uh, keen to, to get on the ball. Um, he looks a, a, a reasonably good technician as well, the 8, um, so far from what I've seen. Helps the ball on, and he's certainly looking confident here, but Snoss will be disappointed because they're in the attack and uh, just a mistake allowed uh, Ascot to break upon them. Rob Saunders, and we've been taking this. Referee pacing out 10 yards. Slateford and Sims, the two man wall. Huddle of uh, players are just on the edge of the six yard box. Saunders with a kick. Blocked by Lean. Still not out of trouble yet, though. Sims good heading to Slateford. Here's Slateford. Here's his lines. Not to concede at this stage of the game. Up through from Andy Dean. And he's out by Weta. Dean again. Cross comes in, but that'll go all the way through to Chapman. Chapman's kick. Uh, just over the halfway line. As so he should try to push forward again. And his little. Pushing head in, only going to Bailey, and then that long deal through all the way to Chapman. I have to say, conditions not helping any uh, any skill being seen at the moment. As both sides struggling with the wind and the rain. Try a little bit of control from him. Eddie with the ball comes off the defender. He's got a chance with his left foot, but. Uh, he had to do something quick with it, it was just running off out of play. Well, that's the first time they've got Liam Eddy in between the fullback and the centre half. And um, you can see, what, you know, he's electric when he gets in there. A uh, good block to start with, but it just came back to him in a really acute angle um, on his weaker side, and he's, he's put it um, past the, the near post. But it's going to be interesting in the second half because Ascot's strengths are certainly down their left hand side. Um, and it will be um, interesting how they cope with this slope down trying to play. As uh, many of us have played here over the years, this bottom side can be very tricky. But it's definitely Ascot's strength, and, and, and Snorsel also going to do everything they can to nullify that. Um, the nine doesn't impress me, the seven has done nothing, and it's all been about the ten and eleven, um, with the three backing them up for me at the moment. Well, that uh, was fairly tight, but um, both, the, both attackers Offside, the line have got the, uh, the nod of approval from Queen Hooper. Yeah, definitely both centre forwards. Uh, just didn't work back early enough in the early ball forward. Um, it's caught both of them offside. Lean inside to Eddie. Broken side, had to go for it. He's uh, just caught himself as play goes on and Grace gathers that ball at the near post. Chris Grace, long kick, 
win behind him. Watch a good water clear. Header comes off Lean and then Lee Watt in. He's got nicely the left there to Lean and gets the uh, throw in, I think it is. Yeah, it was an awful game. They weren't, you know, particularly uh, had individual talent, but they were very hard work inside. And it was an away game, which uh, we, we can remember it was very intimidating to the point that we had a police escort um, leading us uh, out of the ground. Um, and it was a game that we should have won and did win, um, but they made it very difficult just because, you know, going away in the bars is difficult to do. Um, and that's why Sunoso got to take the most of this advantage they've got today. Now Scott for the moment, attacking though, Bennett on the ball, looks to shoot, screws it wide. And was it handball going? Goal from Jake Nash. Um, well, Stuart Yetton scored, but um, yeah, Jake Ash made a great run towards the near post. And uh, one of their defenders just nudged his hand up in the air uh, and it happened to flick off his knuckles straight into Stuart Yetton's path and he, and he nodded it in at the back post in the 89th minute. Um, I remember running away thinking, uh, well, the referee's going to call that back. And, and the disbelief to, to actually walk back to the centre circle now and we're 1-0 up with a few minutes spare. All square at the moment. one all. Mark Giles' early goal soon cancelled out by uh, Damien Markman. Not really too many chances to speak of since then. It's, uh, and picked up in the middle of the park by Saunders there, but uh, in the space rather than to a man. Giles on the ball. Just uh, let us right, worry then for a few seconds. It's, uh, it's a long clearance by Watts, but that's uh, Rodriguez who clears away. What's with the throw to the skipper and Chris Wesky? Both skippers come together there. Long clearance by Grace. That's a able to deal with that one now. Quick throw by Scott there. Just perhaps trying to turn the pressure on a bit as uh, that ball skid away out of play. Good goal kick. Yeah, again, the right ball, that left channel, was just left a little bit short. Um, Dean, the left back for, for Ascot's done well against Slates. Um, he's really quick, uh, and Slates is having a few problems with him, uh, putting him under pressure. Dan Lean goes to support Slates, the ball gets lost. Um, and again, you know, the back uh, three that's left just aren't sliding across uh, to cover that channel area. Hopefully it will help second half with, with defending the bottom side. Uh, so I'd say at the moment, take one all at half time um, and, and then look to, to build upon that and hopefully nullify, as I said, what I believe is Ascot strength and that's literally all the way down through their left hand side. A ball towards Bennett, but again the number nine was offside if he had not touched it at all, but Chapman just rolls it forward and then a long clearance. And as long as it this after it's the win. Two minutes of added on time to play. Just seems the, uh, the board come up there quickly as Ascot trying to push it forward. Giles against Bennett. Giles stopped Bennett but couldn't keep it in play as uh, Hancock with the throw. Boone. Back to Hancock. Comes inside Reski. Oh, Slater's clearance is not there, and it's Darrell McLean that uh, punishes it. 2-1 to Ascot. Yeah, they gave away a, a cheap throw in down this bottom side to Norstall and switched off from it as well. Um, an easy throw in because they took their time taking the throw in. Um, no one picked up. A uh, little ball back. The two went inside. Chris Reski too easy. Uh, drove into the box. Uh, unfortunately for, for Neil Slate for the, a poor clearance. Um, which, which landed to, to, to one of their danger men, um, the 11, and he slotted it straight into the bottom corner on, well, what was 46 minutes, that's a real blow. 
Yes, in the uh, first minute of added on time there. And uh, came a great finish, we have to say he didn't uh, muck about with that one. As, uh, now we'll see what Sinorski can do. Coming from behind. with the uh, long fields. So Dan Lee with the throw on the top side. Suggestions perhaps that uh, never in fact went out of play, uh, went into play, sorry. So if we got hold of that one better as he clears. Sims brings it down, he's challenged by Dean and Saunders, and Ascot win the throw, take it quickly. Whereas uh, players beginning to just find the surface a little bit tricky. Referee Mr. Huxtable blows for half time, and uh, Glyn Sinoff's training 2 on 2 on What's uh, Phil Lafty going to say in the change room there, half time? It's first half, that's it, it's 2 1 at half time, and. Um, They've got the home advantage, they need this crowd to get behind St Austell. They've got to come out second half positive. They're going to be disappointed, obviously. They've got to look after the 11 um, and the 10, who are the two key players uh, for me. Uh, and I think they've just got to take a little bit more care in, in possession of the ball. I think they've rushed going forward a little bit too early. Um, they, they need to move the Ascot side around a little bit because they are a big side. Um, and they've got to be more, more patient in possession, build pressure. Build pressure often results in mistakes. Ascot are going to want to hold on to this, and the, you know, the later the game goes, uh, they could end up panicking. So don't give anything away early doors, stay in the game, wait if need be uh, until the 92nd, 93rd minute even to get an equaliser. Uh, you, you can't afford to panic in these situations come out all guns blazing in the first 10 minutes get caught by a counter attack now you're 3-1 down at home that's a, a, an almighty challenge then they come back from there um, they're in the game uh, and I think in any quarter final of any cup if you're still in the game at half time um, you've got to be happy with that that's Glenn Hooper summarising there so half time here at Portsmouth Park AFC Snorstle 1 Ascot United 2 dress bought flowers ordered photographer booked haven't thought about a video yet or is Uncle Harry filming your special day? Do you want the floor and the backs of your guests' heads to take the limelight? Or do you want everything about your wedding day to be perfect and to have memories that will last a lifetime? If so, choose the professionals, Piran Films. We at Piran Films have 10 years of experience as videographers. Not only do we have the latest professional kit, but we know what works and why it works. As well as filming the vital parts of your wedding, such as the vows and speeches, we'll get the killer shots. We are creative filmmakers. We strive to capture the emotion, as well as the excitement, of your very special day. And importantly, we'll make your guests feel relaxed. Now, Piran Films were fantastic throughout, um, on the day and afterwards with the, uh, with the work that was done on the DVD and family and friends have all been really, really impressed. We were able to pick out our own music and have it running um, over the top of the DVD. It just made it quite emotional and special to us, really. So, yeah, it was... You've cried every time you've seen it. Yeah. <laughs> Becca's been a fantastic daughter to us. She's always smiling and cheerful, and conscientious and hardworking. And we will miss you greatly, Bex. <laughs> Um, and I'd thoroughly recommend them to anyone that I knew that was getting married. Definitely. So off we go in this uh, second half of the uh, FA Vars quarter final. We have Cecil Austin training at the moment 2 1 from Ascot United. Early goal from Martin Giles cancelled out. Uh, more or less straight after by Markman as uh, was Bennett attacking at the moment for Ascot. Breckenshaw picks up the loose ball and trying to use Watts on that far side. 
just touched it forward a bit too far and uh, slides out for a throw into on Scott. Charles Clear is only to uh, the midfield number six. Jesse Wilson there as uh, Sims can get on that loose ball for St Austin and using Eddie. And he takes on Bailey, gets past him, the cross comes in, but uh, Snakeford not far enough forward to get on the end of it. And Dean clears. Clay pushes it past Dan Lean, but uh, Dan Lean doing well there, using his body to uh, stop the run. The wedge is passed, intended pass to Snakeford, goes straight out of play. And Dean with a throw, Bennett. Watts with the clearance. Sims against Rodriguez. Rodriguez heads it uh, down, and Dean is able to keep it in play. As early play in the second half, very quick. Both sides not dwelling on the ball too much. Broken shot beats down Dean's attempted clearance. Boom picks up Andy Dean's throw, now it's Bennett on the ball. Dan Lean just able to shadow it out to the play. What is pass to Sims, cut out by Saunders. Now Markman against Giles. Giles uh, gets on the right side on that occasion and pushes it into Brokenshire. His ball to Eddie, can't get past uh, the fullback, Dave Hancock. Flag was up for offside, but still Austin with possession. Rusky goes past Saunders, Slate for now on the ball, looks behind, there's no man coming up behind him. He can't get past uh, Wilson. Wins the ball back though, good play by the number 11, but the way the conditions are, the weather and everything, neither side able to keep control for too long. A rescue, first time. Can he get Eddie on a run? Eddie against Hancock. On the ball, comes inside, looks up, keeps possession, Hancock falls down, Eddie with a shot. Good save by the keeper, Grace, and uh, Sims not able to get there, unfortunately, before Dean got a boot on it and off for a goal kick, but uh, promising start there. Yeah, apologies for being late. Uh, it's very difficult to get around from the other side of here without people saying hello. Um, yeah, they've got it in the left channel um, again, and you can get them in those channels, and it's going to hurt the defenders. And the simple thing there that he's got into an area that he's just cut back inside, and now with the conditions, um, the captain of Ascot's gone down to ground and, uh, and the keeper's made a bit of a hash actually of uh, parrying it out. But uh, he's got away with it. So five minutes of the second half gone. The rain pounding down again as Sinor still pounding down on this Ascot defence. Cross from Lee comes in but uh, doesn't cause too many problems for Grace. Playing pick up his throw, and it's a good run by the number 11. Broken tries tackle, but uh, still possession for Ascot. Saunders to Bennett. Back to the number eight, Rob Saunders. Ball forward, which uh, St. Austin don't attack. Uh, Watman with a shot, uh, I take it it was a cross grip, uh, shot grip. Yeah, he's definitely gone for the far corner, but uh, Dan Lean and uh, Martin Giles just uh, talking to each other now. Neither one of them uh, attacked the ball, and uh, Ascot did, and, and just got in again inside that, that left channel, which uh, I keep banging on about. It's an area I just think they need to tighten up upon. Watch him with a header out. Saunders, though, for Ascot to the claim. It's a lively number 11 on this flight just in front of us now here at Polterra. 
Lean doing well and uh, Slosser with a goal kick, but uh, conditions, if anything, are getting worse now, Glyn. Is that good or bad for Slosser? No, I'm quite happy with the conditions for Slosser. I just want them to get the ball down and pass the ball. Get it on the floor when it's windy. Get the ball on the floor. The surface is going to slide along with the ball. That will suit Slosser. You know, use the quality that they've got. They've got the better technical players from, from 1 to 11. Um, and I just want them to utilise that and I think if they get it down and they play at a tempo like they did for the first 15 minutes I can see them take the score in you know, a couple more goals here but they just seem at the moment to be very tentative and, and go forward very early be patient, get the ball down, move it quickly and have confidence in their ability well, there's Slateford on the ball can't get past Dean though good play by the uh, number three so Sinostal on the ball, Slateford gets a cross in, it's a good cross but Grace plucks it out of the air, no problem, early ball forward, Watts deals with that, Rescue uh, too high for Rescue but now he has the chance inside the Sims. Broke the track trying to find Slate for him with too long. Webster just knocked it towards Slate for but out of play. The tendency are green actually, I thought he said about 1400 or so, but um, no matter. They're uh, watching a, a very equal balance game here at the moment, although that's got leading 2 1. Uh, Still plenty of play left in this game. Watts with a ball in, but too far. Grace collects it. Make sure he catches it. Both hands are wrapped around the ball. Let's see how far he gets with his kick. Chapman was just about getting it to the halfway line in the first half. Oh, that's not going to go that far as it catches. Not too high as it catches the win. Giles Rescue does well as well to keep it in play. Eddie chases down Hancock and back to the keeper. It's not the best of clearances. Sims on the ball to Neil Slateford. Has to take two touches to get possession. Broke the shot to Sims. Oh, Sims now. Look to turn it inside towards Eddie. Great ball across from Slates um, into Ollie Brokenshaw, who's killed the ball dead for for Jared to, to have a, an opportunity but it's come on his weaker side and he's just dragged the ball when uh, no power in it at all but still would say they've just got to get this ball down and play just move the ball don't they're just very quick to go forward so Norstal um, play through the middle play through the thirds when you've got Ed's up front you, you just really want to utilize his pace all the time um, but they're looking after that, so you've got to find another way. And these, you know, at the moment they've just had a couple of little passes together. Build pressure. Time to build it. Here we go. Patience is the word, I think, is uh, what Queen Hooper is suggesting. But uh, there's 1,400 of us here that uh, aren't quite so good about it. Eddie on the ball. Eddie with a shot, but um, just lifted up as he went to go for it. There we go. You know, they've just had 30 seconds, 40 seconds of just being in and around the Ascot box, um, the big five, the centre half, poor clearance, you know, as, as unfortunately Slate's had in the first half, but this time Ed just blazed it over the bar. With the wind, with the conditions, everything's going towards um, the end that Sonostal's attacking, so they just use, use their ability, they're a very, very good technical side, real opportunity. Eddie, oh, Eddie just couldn't get the right side of the ball there as uh, keeper didn't to make the best appearances as St. Austin applying the pressure though. Dan Lean with the throw. Perkinshaw back to the thrower. Perkinshaw again but he's beaten down by McLean and makes the throw to St. Austin. Sims gets, oh, I was going to say gets her, but uh, the number five slips. Now Slateford on the ball. Slateford shoots, and it's there! What a wonderful goal! 12 minutes into the second half, Slateford makes up for his mistake in the first half. 
2-2. Two -two. I was about to say he should have gone left again, but what a strike. The last couple of minutes had also just shortened their game up. Um, they've been in their half for the whole time and just built a little bit of pressure. And in the end, a slip in the middle of the park from one of their one of their defenders allowed Slates just to drift into that area centrally and hit a great strike. The keeper, mind you, um, low down. That was disappointing from him. Um, he, he didn't get anywhere near it. Keep the game short, and also keep it short. Move the ball quickly. Well, that's the way to respond early in the second half. 12 minutes gone. Game on here at two all at Polter Park. FA Vars quarter final. It's a special competition. It always brings out the best in in games, uh, especially the corner sides over the years. It's in Austria making sure this one is also another one to remember as uh, they try to get for it. Hancock for Ascot. So also just got to perhaps calm things down a bit now. Nice play there by Giles. Very cool. Watts on the ball, he'll look to knock it long. Bailey with a header to Hancock inside the Saunders. Brain can't keep that one in play. And, uh, come on, hey, come on, keep the ball short. Keep it short, Ollie. Move, move the ball. Coaching from the commentary box here, Glenn Hooper, keep it short. That's what he's asking or telling some Austin to do. Now Bailey will perhaps have a bit of trouble with that one. Grace comes out of his box and he's there and he puts it in and it's a goal, 3-2. Bailey and the keeper, Grace, mucked it up between them and he makes the most of it. Yeah, no, the keeper didn't have control of it. Um, it's right on the edge of the box, he's paused to wait for the ball to drop into the box. It never did. And Ed, as he does, he is alive to anything. If there's a goal at the end of it for him, he'll make sure that he'll run all day long. What a turnaround in this game. And this game is now for them. There is a definite balance change. They've definitely shortened things up. I'm sure Phil's gone in at half-time and said, pass the bloody ball, because they didn't pass it first half. They have done now. And they're really, really well, more than in the game. They're now in front 3-2 and the semi-final beckons. Yes, now it's a case of let's really calm down and collect ourselves. St Austin will be uh, put under pressure for the next five minutes or so. Surely as Ascot, they've made this long trip down. They've got nothing to lose. They've got to go for it. This is their one chance as well. Two years ago, they got to the quarter-final stage and, uh, and didn't make it. So they lost on that occasion after a replay. They know what it's like to lose in a quarter-final, but uh, for the moment, it's in Austin on the up, 3-2. Apart from uh, not bad enough for the game to be called off, but that would be something. Andy Dean with the throw. Slateford cuts it out. Neil Slate for him. Well, he must feel like uh, after that mistake, let's face it, it was a mistake to give Ascot that chance for the second goal, and he gets that cracking second goal in, or St Austin's second goal to, to even things up. Now McLean on the ball for the Yellows, cross comes in, Wexford gets ahead to it, he tries to get distance, Dingle helps it out. Maybe Dean down this bottom side, Goes around Slateford, but uh, Dan Lean is there. Throw to Ascot, though. Ascot supporters behind that uh, goal. Again, uh, trying to pick their side up as the singing is coming from St. to win. Wetter with a header. Crane brings it down. Gets across him, but that'll go. Out of play for a goal kick on the far side, and uh, so also just uh, collect themselves a moment, Glenn. Yeah, you, now it's about you know managing the game. Um, a couple of times I spoke about managing the game, managing the situation with referees, managing the game now 3 2 in front at home um, with awful conditions, slow everything up, know when it's the right time to increase the pace of it, increase the tempo. Take your opportunities when it's there and make sure you look after what you've got. 
goal from him. Eddie is 10th in the FA Vars run as uh, goes for that one, but uh, after just skidding off the surface as uh, it's bound to do in this second half with the, the rain continuing to come down. If not stronger or heavier this half than the first half, and uh, you can see the brollies up. Now that's an all-stop crowd uh, suggesting the keeper's going to have a problem with this kick. It's a good one now, halfway line, met by Giles. Sims, no, he went down on that one, I think. It's uh, Slateford now, in possession for the Lily Whites. Can't get it past Andy Dean, though. And that, uh, oh, brilliant punch by the cameraman there. Protecting his, uh, protecting his equipment, no doubt. Dan Lean with the throw, down the touchline, over the claim. Slightly can't keep possession, it's been blocked off by Andy Dean, and it's a throw to Ascot. Managing the game now slightly changes because you're three two up. To get into, back into the game, they needed to pass the ball. Now they can afford to just go a little bit longer. If it goes out of play, that's not a problem. The keeper's got an awful job to try and even clear the halfway line. So they don't have to force it by pass, pass, pass. When it's not on and they don't have to take a risk, clip it into a little channel. If it drops out of play, that's okay, as it did there. Right down into the bottom corner, you just, you know, Ascot have got to chase the game now. Um, and so also just got to say, well, we'll just put the ball into your half. You've got to come and beat us. Lean with a throw towards Sims. Met by Saunders and the third, but what's it? To Watts uh, goes inside of the skipper of Ascot. Hancock looks to shoot. He, oh, comes off the bar. What a tremendous shot. What a goal that would have been. A Watts classic. He, once he stepped inside, there was nothing else that was going to happen, and he has caught it sweet as, but it is rattled off the crossbar. What a goal that would have been. We all say it, but the next goal, Ben, is so important, isn't it? Um, it's, it is, yes, but if, if St Austell get it, it's game over. If Ascot get it, then it's it's very much still in the... I don't think Ascot can come back from two goals, personally. I don't think there's enough quality in their side to be able to do that. Um, where if it goes to three all, that then it just makes an even one. Um, so for me, it's an awesome score. Score, it's all over. Well, let's hope that's what happens then. Defenders doing their defending work there is uh, Dan Lean. I must admit, really, Dan Lean, it, it seems to be a bit of an unsung hero in St Austin. He's had a brilliant season, hasn't he? People talk about Dan Lean, but they don't forget how many years he's been here through the difficult times. Played at County Youth, I know Tommy Matthews thought, and, and I've always thought myself, what a really, really good player. You know, you talk about a good pro, that, that's what he is. He's, he's a good pro at this level, um, just gets on with his job, doesn't look for the accolades. Uh, I tell you, you don't want to play against him, as I did a couple of times. Strong as a box. Oh, oh, Ollie Brogenshaw on the edge of the box. Yeah, uh, and a top, top player and a top, top lad. Reskies cross in towards that far post. Slateford couldn't quite get there, but dangerous again. It's also Austin. Um, the conditions are, are suiting them. Uh, the wind's in their favour. The surface for me is in their favour. Uh, the, obviously, the scoreline is now in their favour. It's it's an awful to lose um, and I said before the game they can reach the semi-final they've matched anything anything any corner side has ever done in this competition Chris Grace with a good kick what is there though Crane's ball forward towards Bennett Bennett can't turn and bring it under control there's uh, some also break again but uh, trying to get it to Eddie but Saunders with a long ball forward Chapman was uh, in control. Yeah, the, yeah, he is in control. The nine's poor for us. But, um, sorry, you know, you always look at number nines as an X one. Um, he's a poor player for me. Um, he should be there. He's not very mobile, so he's got to be a target man. Um, he 
doesn't have an awful lot of vision. He isn't great in the air. He doesn't have a great touch. Uh, everything is about the 10 and 11 there. The little bit of quality. Uh, look after that. Uh, what a party it's going to be this evening. So midway through the second half, St. Austell, one foot in the door of the semi-final draw Monday. Long throw by Dan Lean, Slateford keeps it in that penalty area, Sims again, suggestion that uh, he wanted a handball there, but no. And the Thames left there if uh, it had come off a, a white head. Wilson with a strong header towards that right side for Lee Boom, but Watts is there. And when he clears, he clears. Sims lets it go over his shoulder. Now, the suggestion that it was pretty much out of play before it got to him, I think, but uh, Dave Hancock, that's got skip move with the throw. Rescue cuts that line, moves uh, towards Lee, Liam Eddy, Eddy to Slateford, Slateford looks to shoot, no he doesn't, no he does with his left foot, oh, oh. and how close was that? It opened up, um, I just saw from the, from the top side, uh, they were unbalanced uh, in defence, uh, Ascot and Liam Eddy's cut, cut inside, um, and Slates has joined in the play, great, Great little touch with his right foot to take uh, the defender away. And, oh, that is close. The keeper certainly wasn't getting there. Supposed to move forward again. Rescue with a lot of space to run into. Comes inside. He's got lean. Yes, he uses the number two. Loads of players now for Sinorston who want the ball, but... Uh, he thought Eddie was coming into that space, but um, he checked his run. It's Grace with the uh, time to look up. Where's he going to knock this one? <laughs> Slaper with a header forward. Only Dean Frascott, long ball down this bottom side. Watch his clearance comes off Markman. And watch him make sure it goes out of play. Dean to McLean, back to Saunders. He's also just having to defend at the moment. Bennett makes the run towards the ball. Kept it in play, but couldn't find his teammate. And uh, it, is, <laughs> but it is a throw to Ascot. Get out. Get out there. Saunders switches play to Dave Hancock. Looks to shoot, but uh, we'll take those all afternoon. Yeah, just again though, Snorts were a little bit unbalanced in defence there. Um, Ollie's had to make, Ollie Brokenstein had to make the 40 yard run across to close the, uh, to fall back down. Uh, first substitution of the afternoon um, by Ascot. Wow, that, that really does surprise me. That, that shocks me, is it? Uh, the 10 uh, for Ascot is coming, coming off and he looks an absolute unit, the lad that's come on. Um, he is a big, big lad and... <laughs> If he's got pace to go with the size, then this could cause also a few problems. Interesting class. Jaws versus Yarny, I think, coming up in the next, uh, what, 18 minutes or so. Dingle on the ball. It's also still attacking. Sims couldn't quite get it back to Dingle, but uh, Slateford. Good tackle in the end. Slateford, can he take on Dean? Well, he does enough anyway. Slow it, slow it, slow it, slow it. Slow it. Yeah, giving bad habits to the ball boy there, suggesting he missed kicks it back to the players. As uh, Slateford's header into the box is cleared, but Dan Lean on the ball now. Comes inside one. Doesn't get past Saunders, but it's still Saunders in possession. Dingle will spread the play. Martin Watts with that shot. Oh, that one though nearly knocked that red umbrella away. Yeah, again, Martin Watts, you know with the wins and everything going um, just switch the play there Dan Lean did well open up the game from Geordie Dingle and he just steps in and 35 yards out <laughs> 35 yards out for normal players you say oh what are you doing Martin what are you telling him to shoot yes 
he will be disappointed with that one, I think, because uh, the whole ground just waited a second as he ground his leg back, but uh, it wasn't to be on that occasion. Jaws with a header forward. Come on, come on, Slates, come on, 15! 15 to go, Lena, come on! Slates is up. Gregory Shaw's there. Paul's not sure of Wilson, the Saunders all helped it on, but. Uh, Joyles and then to Martin Waltz. Inside to Eddie. Eddie with Bailey on his back. He's in Chris Rescue. He told Sims where to go and he finds him, but he's offside. Rain continues to come down at Cold Tower, but uh, I'm sure everyone will be staying to the very last second of this match as it stays 3 2 at the moment to St. Austin. Jaws with a header to Brogdon. Lee will clear it. Now a ball for him. James Eddie to run on uh, to Liam Eddie to run on to. Eddie takes on the keeper. Oh, he went around him but should have gone the other side. No, uh, I don't know. Um, who am I to, to say he just made the wrong decision there? But keeper was out of position. He could have slid it down the side of him. And um, with the keeper being so big, I just thought if you hit it low and hard down towards his feet, it, it was a goal for me. Um, but he's ended up taking a touch and, and making the angle really, really narrow. God, that, that was that was game. That was an opportunity for game. Ooh. Even then, it's surprising how Chris he actually did get with the idiot effort seen at such an acute angle. But uh, Grace in possession again into the last quarter of an hour. FA Vars quarter final action here at Colts Airport. You feel it's just beginning to get even hotter as. Uh, St. Austell in possession, Slateford on the ball. Broken Charles got the space, he's got it now, he's got the ball, he looks up, he knows Watts is up there somewhere. Finds him, and the cross come in. Sim steps over, goes to Broken Shire. Oh, he tried to place it, but it's a good block by the Ascot defender. Now it's Ascot's turn to move forward. 16 Yarny on the ball. Big guy goes past Dingle, but not to able to get past the cover amount of Dingle as uh, for Slateford. Slateford just perhaps uh, putting up a little touch of cramp there. But, um, yeah, number 16, he's a big boy, but I don't think he's that mobile. No, all the talk at the moment about the Cornwall Coliseum. Um, he reminds me of people that used to stand on the door and kick me out. <laughs> So we've got a substitution. Will Tinsley is the man coming on, and number 10, Jared Sins, is off. So we're still moving forward. Eddie can't get past uh, Rodriguez though. Oh, look, Tinsley uh, on as a sub. That's his first touch. Didn't know too much about that one, but uh, block the ball forward. He's so news. Doesn't find the yellow shirt, but he's got another chance. Still doesn't. Broken shot, not finding a white shirt now. Just at the moment, bit of scrappy play here by St. Austin's McLean to take on Lean. Hard post cross over everyone and Chris Rusky. I know what to do with this one, but uh, substitution seems going off. Uh, Paul Tinsley, more than a winger. Coming on, Ben, what do you make of that I think I'll make more of it when I see what system he's decided to go. If he's, It looks like he's brought Neil Slateford more central, so they've gone to a five. Um, across the middle of the park, Will Tinsley will run all day long for you and will hopefully look after the threat down here. Um, my only concern with that is that you leave Liam Eddy then up front. If he doesn't get hold of it, and I thought Simsy has done well today, in getting hold of the ball when they played short passes. If they don't then keep the ball, you're just going to invite Ascot pressure. Um, because I thought St. Austin were actually controlling the game. Um, so I'm just hoping that that change doesn't allow Ascot now to get themselves back in it and you, you hold on to this for what is now uh, 17 minutes plus, uh, plus injury time. Um, that's the last thing you want to really do is, is hold on um, when, you, when you're so in control. And I haven't seen anything in the last 20 minutes from Ascot to say that, that they were going to be able to turn this tie around. Broken shot. This uh, just off the 
pitch on the road uh, after that injury is uh, Watts tries to clear, comes off a yellow shirt and it's a white throw, but tries back on of course Oli uh, didn't complete the game last Saturday, he had a bit of a, a hamstring sort of tweak, but he's uh, right there in the middle of the park at the moment. Between him and Slakehurst, to who's got the muddiest kit on him, but uh, he's on the ball. And this pop side to Neen, using Tinsley. Neen's continuing the run. Will Tinsley comes inside, balling towards Eddie. Eddie, oh! He's won the corner, but uh, perhaps could have made more of it. Yeah, if he hits it first time across the keeper, he scores. The keeper came miles out of his goal. It was in no man's land. It's interesting. Hands up. Edge has played the game again. Um, yeah, yellow card to the keeper. Um, clever, clever, you know. And we we said in the last two rounds, what you've got to remember, Snorsel got through in the last two rounds, finishing up the sides against nine and ten. Today was always going to be different if... Ascot can keep 11 players on the pitch, which they have done so far. But Neil Slate has gone to play in the hole, uh, in behind in behind uh, Liam Eddy, to sort of fill that midfield up. But there's a corner here now to Snorstall. Dangerous play again with Martin Watts' his delivery. It's just the one Snorstall player in the six-yard box. The, uh, the others well past the far post. It's a corner. Comes in. It's hard. Oh, oh. Dean is there, but over. And... Uh, possibly thinking he could have done better yeah he was under pressure um, but Dan Lean's so good in those areas that when you see him have an opportunity six yards out uh, but what a delivery from Martin Watts six yards to keep us rooted to the goal uh, goal line but ten minutes ten minutes for a quite unbelievable achievement from this football club it's an awesome crowd I think and then getting noisier behind that goal. Grace slightly miskicks his uh, goal kick and out of play. Ascot uh, coach there asking his players to just raise it one more time. Uh, number four, Rodriguez sees Eddie pouring down on him. Corner ball. He is really a pain in the ass. Um, Liam Eddy just runs the fun uh, and again no pressure most centre forwards just stand there and watch that Liam Eddy no thanks I'm going to chase it now there's a corner and another opportunity yeah. this time Slakeford to swing it in from that top side and that is a swinger Giles is there no Rodriguez gets it Brokenstar goes for it he holds up it's still Brokenstar is oh, no. blocked but oh, uh, offside All happening in that Ascot penalty area at the moment. Uh, Brokenshaw had a couple of chances there, couldn't quite get behind it properly, and in the end, moved into an offside position. So that should defend. Wetter caught by the number 16, Yarny. But here we go. The seven minutes left, and um, Ascot can't get out of their half. So also are managing the game so so well. Uh, and they've just got to keep doing that. They've got to keep putting the ball into Ascot spots because they're going to have to take, they're going to have to gamble in that min at, in a minute. Um, sorry, I'm getting a bit excited. Uh, they've stayed at 4-4-2. They've got to change it. You know, they're not getting forward. They need to change something. But what we want though is that number nine stay on at the moment. So um, here he is, and uh, that's why. Hopefully, I shouldn't say that, but hopefully. Um, this afternoon continues to uh, be like it has been for the first uh, hour or so as uh, Ascot racing to get the ball back in the play now. Dave Hancock with the throw. Comes square to Rodriguez. He wants Keane to come to him. Now Tinsley will put him under pressure. He does. Will Tinsley in possession. Fresh pair of legs in this bottom corner. Gets the throw. Manage again. Tinsley to take to take the throw as it comes to Dan Lee back to uh, the substitute. Get something. All right. 
Oh. Is this kick going to go towards uh, Dan Lean? Slateford in there putting pressure on the number three Dean and uh, Cooper can't keep that ball in place. There's a throw to Silverstone. Definitely not mobile. Um, so they're going to have to knock long balls into them. And that to me suits an Austin, Wetsy and Jyla. Their strengths is certainly a long ball game. Um, just got to now make sure there's no mistakes. Midfielders track their runners, play the game in their half, which they're trying to do again. Great touch by Ed. Switch the play. Switch the switch. And he just looked at the man who bounced off him there. Is uh, Abby on the right? But Tinsley can't keep that one in play. And, uh, <laughs> Liam Eddy's now enjoying this game. Liam Eddy enjoys any time he's on a football pitch. Um, he just, he's infectious around the game of football. He, he lives and breathes it. Here he is on the ball, coming inside. Gets away from Rodriguez, but um, his left foot not ever curl that ball in the top corner. That's OK, that's OK. It's more time wasted. Um, Keeper's taking his time now down into the last... You know, we've got four minutes left. I can't, you know, I can't see there being any more than, than three minutes of injury time. I don't think uh, from memory that there's been a physio on. Um, another substitution here uh, with Dan and Cara coming on and, and Slate's going off to... Uh, what a great goal from him, you know. He was devastated with what he did uh, with his clearance by his reaction afterwards. But if you're a good player, you get over that and you, and you try and change the game. And his little bit of magic again has changed this game as he did in the last round. And I think by the applause that he's getting from those uh, in the stands, Neil Slateford could well have turned this tie because from that goal, there's only been one side in this and that's been St. Austin. Dan Lankaro, the man who's faced him. St. Austin. Everyone is organising each other now. They're, they're up for this now. Grace slips. Brooklyn's are on the ball. Still on the ball. Moving forward. Looks up. Goes for goal. And what a great shot from distance. Grace got a touch to it. Corner ball. Yeah, take your time. The ball is going to come back very quickly from that crowd. Uh, but the right decision. You're going to have a strike if the keeper grabs it. It's difficult to get out from your own half. Um, he's 30 yards out, aiming towards the top corner, was going in the top corner, keeper tips it over, Chris Reskey's talking to the referee, he's strolling across, they're going to go to the corner and keep it in there, um, they just need to look after this little pocket in the middle here, yeah, here we go, look, Ollie Brokenshaw's dropped off, Dan Lee was going to do it, but they'll keep it over there, you know, 40, 42 and a half minutes played. One of those occasions where you don't mind if it stays there for the next three minutes, but uh, unfortunately, free kick to Ascot. Referee Mr. Hudson will run on the spot. Uh, he's nicked a few yards there, but um, he's got away with that one. It's, uh, oh, it's not the best of kicks. No, Eddie on the ball. Tinsley's on the side, he's taking on Rodriguez, corner. into go the box. The go to the corner. Uh, he's uh, just yeah. taking yeah, time, yeah, 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 yeah. Rodriguez uh, yeah. against him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, throw to the Lily Whites. Now we've got to a stage where every two seconds we're looking at the clock and it hasn't moved on very long. Well, they've now changed. Um, Ascot have gone 4-3-3, three, three. they've thrown the, the big number five up front. So all they've got is a long ball because there's no pace up there. Um, they, they took the lad off that had pace. Wouldn't surprise me if they get another goal actually, Sonorso. Tinsley on the ball with a shot. Oh, that was a good opportunity to wrap this game up. Yeah, uh, but drop back in again. Keeper's not kicking well. The crowd have got to the keeper again. We've seen that before in previous games. Uh, well, we're in the last minute. Here we go. I, I don't think there can be more than three minutes extra time played at this. He's telling Chris Resky uh, how long to go, I think. But uh, we haven't seen the board go up yet. That kick, again, not the best. Resky on the ball. Moving forward with it. Still on the ball. Taking on the defence. He's still in possession. Corner, corner, corner. 
into Nankara. Nankara turns. Oh, and that's a good, good turn. And Rodriguez blocks as a corner to the home side. More seconds added up or taken off the clock. Well, I don't understand Ascot's tactics at all. Um, they've had no success with target men. Take off your quickest players. Put big lumps up front. I just hope I'm not proved wrong here, but uh, I haven't seen what's gone up. The board's about to go up now with how long is left. He's very reluctant to put, put the board up. Um, a maximum of six substitutions. Four minutes. I don't know where he's got the extra minute from. But, hey, we're on Fergie time. We can live with it, surely. Uh, as uh, St. Austin choosing to keep this corner short. Tinsley and Nankara, the two substitutes. Dean tries to keep Nankara off the ball, but it is a yellow kick. And the referee... The referee wanted to have a word with someone. Now, I think that's Tinsley. He's yeah. shown a yellow too. Yeah, yellow to Tinsley. That's OK. He hasn't stopped his watch. He's taken a book in. Another 30 seconds. We're now, we're now 46 minutes in. Three minutes to go. Semi-final. Who would have thought it at the beginning of the year we could be still here saying semi-final, two legs, Sun Austal, FA Vars, two games away from Wembley. Tinsley's up, make sure the ball goes out of play. No, sim no sympathy for Bennett as he gets up. Two minutes, come on, come on, two minutes! Number five is uh, looking at Glenn Hooper there with a surprise that the commentator can be so biased, but uh, he doesn't know we're corners, we're St. Austin supporters. And Cara will just make sure Rodriguez has to play it. That's a white throw. Poor play from the centre half, he had to let the ball roll out. All he's ended up doing is rolling out now for another throw into St. Austin down in the bottom right hand corner. And as we know, to try and score from the bottom right hand corner and go to the top side, Difficult, another, another throw in. So they're managing this game superbly. Uh, just no mistakes. What a professional, professional performance it has been since they've gone three-two up. Two minutes, two minutes to continue doing it. They're throwing everything forward now, Ascot. Yes, so Grace will hang around with this kick. It's caught the wind. It's not going that far, but it's a yellow head on it. Rodriguez, Giles is there. It's clear to just blocked. Yarny turns, still on the ball, the big number 16. But um, Tinsley corner, took it away corner, now. Corner. And he's making the run, and he's in here! Can he get there? No, he doesn't on that occasion. Chris Grace was off his line quick. Foiled Eddie. Oh, Lee is there with a mammoth header. Unfortunately, Liam still coming Get back, up. but uh, they need to push it up. In the third minute of added on time here. Oh, Ian Brook, he's been, come on, he's uh, going to be the best of attempts here to do anything with it. Eddie. Rodriguez knocks it off and it's a throw to uh, the home side. Into the last minute of uh, of this semi uh, of this quarter final. Gordian Slipner is saying semi-final. Semi-final. Uh, that should be it. Manage the game now in the corner. You know, we're, we're down to the last 40 seconds of the game. Um, you shouldn't now. They haven't had a chance since going 3 2 up. I've, got, I've not really actually been in the second half. I'll love to, to speak to Phil afterwards to see what his team talk was. Whilst all the players are going to get the accolades um, for their second half performance, something changed in that changing room. Um, and that's got to have come from the management and the management team of Gary Penaligan and Andy Parr. Um, and I'm sure it was about getting the ball down and passing it uh, and believing in what they can do. Watch the throw. It's Nankaro. Runs off for a goal kick. We are now in whatever time the referee decides to add on into the unknown. Certainly for St. Austin, they will be into the unknown. Semi final beckons. As Giles on that occasion doesn't win the ball. Dingle does now. Oh, it's so close to Liam Eddie there getting away again. Back to the keeper, Grace. Everyone's looking at the referee, Mr. Huxtable. Blow that whistle, please. Dingle. 
just knocks it forward. That's it. That's and it. there we have it. That is it. Full time. St. Ulster have done what they no one thought could ever be possible into the semi finals. FA Vaz, they're all on the pitch. Glenn Hooper, sum this one up. I'm not sure I can. Um, many sides have tried uh, and, and have reached perhaps quarter finals. And today, St. Ulster have reached the semi final of a national competition. You cannot underestimate how difficult it is for a Cornish club to get to uh, the final stages. I thought St. Austin getting to the last 16 would be an achievement. Getting to the quarter-finals surpassed that achievement. Getting to the semi-finals is dream world. Um, but take nothing away. For me, St. Austin deserve that. There was only one side in that second half. Um, and wow, what, what an occasion we're going to have now for a two-legged semi-final, which Wembley was magnificent, and you can never take that experience away. But the two semi-finals still kept it real. Having to travel, do all the preparation on the away leg, and then for us it was uh, an away leg first and a home game afterwards. Hopefully they'll get the same, and if they can have a, a home leg for, for the second tie, um, it is truly a phenomenal day. We were lucky enough to win it. Um, there, there is a side out there today and there are boys out there today that don't probably realise what they've just achieved. Well, thanks, Green Hooper. Summarising here this afternoon, another piece of history at Voltaire Park. There's been football played here for many, many a year, but no one's ever seen this. It's in also into the semi-finals of the national competition. FA Vaz, what a three weeks now to look forward to that. Monday comes first to draw, and uh, then it's all go again. Great stuff, AFC St. Austin 3, Ascot United 2. Um, uh, certainly a game of two hours, pardon the, uh, the old pun of it, but yeah, just phenomenal that once again, when we had to find something that we didn't show in the first half, they come out second half and, and just absolutely pulverised, in my opinion, Ascot United. Um, desire, strength, belief, quality, everything on show in second half. And, um, you know, they just couldn't live with us once we'd upped our game. I mean, you got off to a great start, a goal after seven minutes. Wonderful finish from Martin Giles. Um, dear me, that lad's come a long, long way, isn't he? Um, fantastic finish. I knew when everyone was celebrating that goal that the next five minutes was going to be really vitally important for us. And so it was. And, and it's a real poor defensive uh, mix-up back there for, that, for their goal. But, yeah, we, we got off to a flyer. They obviously come back in it. Then they took control of the game till half time. But we didn't play to their weaknesses and, and our strengths. We've done absolutely the opposite. And we had to regroup at half time. But once again, I keep saying it in interviews, but they've listened and they've trusted and they've believed what, how we as a management team have told them to go and put it right. I mean, it was a bit of a killer blow, wasn't it? Dare I say it, but that, that second goal you conceded, the man alongside you, Neil Slater, let's bring you in, Neil. <coughs> What was going through your mind at half-time after that? Uh, my head was quite low, I'm not going to lie, it was low. Uh, yeah, just tried to get my head up at half-time and, and go again second half. It all came at me quick and I didn't connect with it right and uh, got punished. That's what happens at this type of level, get punished. But Phil, I mean, Green Hooper <coughs> summarising the day, was, was interested to know what you said half-time because the tactics seemed to change. Yeah, the, the first thing I said to him, because they've had a few bollockings lately with a couple of slip-ups, so... The, 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 there wasn't a bollock in at half time today. It was more about, well, listen, this is how we get back into it because there was a way back. There was definitely a way back because they had weaknesses and, and I knew our fitness would be better because it has been against ed, every opposition this season. Um, so we just talked about stretching the game a bit more, making the pitch bigger because they're not used to that when their home pitch is being so small and play to our strengths, as I keep saying. And, um, and they've listened and they've executed it and they've got the reward just as we talked about at half time. And, you know, while we're talking about it, how many people would have gone, oh, I've had enough of this, take me off, you know, this lad here, is, he knows what the mistake he made, but you know, he's picked his head up, he's got back out there. If you saw this boy in training putting balls in top corners of goals time after time after time, yeah, he's, he's got so much quality and, and he's, he's put us right back you know, where we wanted to be, give us the momentum back the second half and, and we've gone and done the job. Might be a good opportunity to say thanks to Godolphin, perhaps. <coughs> Absolutely, fantastic. Um, you know, they do things correctly as a club and they've proven that we've obviously... We've probably, we've obviously us having Neil Slateford here today available. Um, not every club, I don't think, would have would have gone with that, but they did. And, and thanks to Tanya and everyone at Godolphin for that. Yeah, that's um, that, that's that's fantastic. And Neil, that that 
I mean, we all, Glenn was saying, uh, you know, just before the break, doesn't matter when you score that second goal to get back into the game. He, he said, could have been a 91st minute. But to me, I, I was so pleased that it was early and, and you must have been so pleased. Always delighted to score, especially with that uh, with the first half with my mistake. But yeah, we uh, got a got a second, and then I think there was only one winner. To be honest, we were always going to go on and uh, and get that third. I think. So, and Liam Eddy, of course, nicked in there for the third goal. That's what Ed's does. He's a pain. He always creates chances like that. He creates goals for himself. He's done it, done it everywhere he's been, and he'll and he'll continue to do it. I'm glad he's playing for us. I mean, did you guys think at the start of the season, especially for you, because you were at true at the very start of the season and things didn't quite work out work wise whatever you, you hear it's an awesome ever thought of a, a Vaz semi-final not not something I immediately thought at the start of the season I knew we were in the Vaz um, it's one of those where you take each game in the Vaz you, you play it and if you keep winning you keep winning and we've got to the semi-final so superb mm. and Phil final word from you I mean it's going to be a great night but now you've got Another three weeks, <laughs> you know, you've got league action to take. You must get fed up thinking, <clears throat> do I play my full side? Do I get an injury? You know, what goes through your mind every game now? This bloody lot keep giving me headaches. That's, that's what's going through my mind. Because, yeah, the next three weeks, you know, it's a, a wanted distraction, but can sometimes work against you. And, that, and that's where management of the players over the next three weeks, with all the games we've got in between, some big games, is going to be really important. Um, so... You know, we, we are where we are on merit. We've deserved to be where we are in this competition. Um, did we set out to do this and, and really believe we were going to get this far at the beginning of the season? Of course we did, not in this competition. But let's not deny the fact that this is a talented bunch of individuals. Um, and, and, and they just don't know when they're beaten. And, and the draw is Monday and someone told me it's on Talk Sport. 11.30 Monday morning, Talk Sport. Yeah, we'll be listening and watching that. Might even be my cousin... Uh, in doing that and presenting it, you never know. Um, if he's pulling balls out, I might give him a little wink and a nudge as to who we get. Do you really care though? Not really at this stage because if you want to win it, you've got to beat everyone, haven't you? You've got to beat anyone and everyone that's put in front of you. So uh, that second half performance today um, would be a match for anyone left in this competition, I firmly believe. OK, well, thanks, guys. Great stuff again. Piran Films are so pleased to be here following this Brilliant. and uh, we'll be there for the semi-final, hopefully. Thanks, Piran Films. Cheers, Brilliant. Thank you. Pleasure. Cheers. Pleasure.